right, this is Art's Epiphone SG. It's gonna get this pickup, which I think is a vintage DiMarzio because it has hex pull pieces. It looks like it's from late 70s to early 80s from the wire on it and the, the metal's patina. This is our the greasiest of conversations. That's what's going to go in the neck. In the bridge, we're going to give it a burst bucker. So that in case you never bought a Gibson pickup, it comes with a jewelry box. So if you like jewelry, you're going to like Gibson pickups. We also already put new knobs on it. It has one of these gumdrop knobs, which I think is a Gresh thing. Uh, correct me in the comments. And this giant old radio knob, old 70s stereo knob we found. But that knob's got to come off because we're replacing the pot too. The pot's going to be this 1M pot that says B1M. This is 1000K, whereas a Gibson's usually 500K and a Fender's usually 250K. So it opens wider. All the way down, moves this middle washer to this far left washer, shorts the two together, and shorts your signal. When you turn it all the way up, it opens up to eventually have, instead of 500K ohms bridging your signal, 1000K ohms, which is wider, more space for your sound. I've also heard it said by Kay Caruso, shout out, that you have less high frequency roll off when you roll the volume down with these. But I can tell you, it gets way louder. You have higher output and brighter output. I introduced my soldering iron. It is a Hacko and it's the $16 Fry's Electronic Special. So we're looking for a cheap soldering iron. This is the one. It's a 40 watt, but it's a hot 40 watts. The tip has some kind of magic to it where it doesn't get gunky as quick. And uh, 40 watts for these Hackos or a Weller is way better than 40 watts of Radio Shack. It's way hotter. But it's in a Weller base here. My old melted up Weller base. Little known fact, <laughs> this company Hacko, that's where the term hacking comes from. No, it really? No. Nah. <laughs> Gets me every time, man. Okay, step one, we're gonna loosen up the strings. We don't have to take them all the way off. Okay, next, unscrew the back, and we're gonna desolder our pickup wires. So we have the back off. You can see one of these is coming in from the bridge, and one's coming in from the neck. And I have not worked on a guitar this new to where, like, they're color-coded, and one's red and one's black. <laughs> So I don't know which is which. So we're gonna have to slip the pickups out and find out that way. But remember, the top pin here went to the red one and the bottom pin here went to the black one. Cause that's all we're gonna really desolder is the hot wire from both of them and the ground from over here. Slap the wires and the new pickups in those same spots. And at the same time, we're going to swap out this volume pot. We're just going to put the same wires to the same spots. Fun thing on this guitar, you almost forgot to mention, is the tone knob has a kill switch if you push on the tone knob. It also feels like the tone knob clicks when you turn it all the way up. I'm not sure if it's disengaging the tone when you turn it all the way up, which would be a cool feature because the tone nub does suck a little bit of tone even all the way up. I think I said tone nub. A tone <laughs> nub. So twist that tone nub, push it in for a kill. I'm gonna tell you the secret to soldering earlier and I'm gonna bring it up again later. But you melt the part with the solder. Right now we're just desoldering. We're just getting it hot and pulling the wire away. So no serious surgery yet. Just you know, don't break it. Or break it in ways that you can fix easy. If you have temperature on your soldering iron, 
you have to turn it all the way up for anything where you're soldering to like the base of the switch. See how there's this big glob of solder on the back of it? The whole switch has to get hot to get that glob of solder hot. And you need a good 40 watt iron like this to be able to melt that part. This is a big, and if you touch anywhere in this whole part of the switch, it's very crazy hot now. And that's it, the pickups are already free. What's with this little film that's in the inside of it? This coating? Yeah. It is conductive paint, and it makes the whole inside shielded along with this shiny here. So it makes it in a metal box like a Faraday cage so that it's all in a grounded box then. Okay, yeah, Art's taking the pickups out now. You want to remove the frame and leave the middle screw attached right now. As soon as he's got the frame screws out, we're going to uh, loosen that middle screw enough to where it allows us to slip the pickup out from under the string or strings, depending <laughs> on how many strings you have on your guitar. Right now. <laughs> Except the fact that the neck frame is thinner than the bridge frame, so it's two different thicknesses of frames. Some guitars, the bridge pickups actually sounds different too. I mean, they sound different because of their position, but... Sometimes they're actually labeled different. Yeah. Sometimes they're, the neck one's like less output or something. So loosen these? Yeah, loose them and then you'll be able to slip it out from under there. So red was the neck pickup. Huh, I was going to guess the red was going to be the bridge. It's that easy, folks. Boom. Okay. See, and that was the neck one. And see how it, uh, you might have noticed yeah, it has a slant to it. The slant... It's supposed to be thicker towards the back and thinner towards the front. And the neck one is thinner yet, but it's still thicker towards the back and thinner towards the neck, thicker towards the bridge. And they do that because to get the most ultimate bridge sound, minute, you want the bridge higher. First. I should have done this one first. Oh, because they have to go through the same hole? Yeah. Huh? Well, at least I got the shit part. Yeah, at least you did the more difficult pickup first. The scary part is now we have to find out if these DiMarzio, these old wires are long enough to make it into the cavity, but it looks like it. You can see the neck one is thinner, and that's actually another bridge one, so... Oh shit. It should be fine though, because your neck is further these two, away from the, the body. two screws over here don't make it that fit. They're not uh, making it past the, the body's not routed away enough. Now, do we cut into the wood? Yeah, I should have brought my Dremel because I think what we're going to have to do is gulp away a little bit of that in the corner. The other thing, it's, the other thing we could do is... take this, is, this back later off and put this one? That's a novel idea. Mm, I don't think it's going to work. But I don't think they're... It looks like they actually would match. Most of the time, though, the back plates uh, got the magnets glued to it, so that's not going to work that well. I was thinking it's possible that we could bend this piece of metal in towards the middle, too, till it lined up with the middle hole. So, we'll have to think about which way is the better way to do it now. I think the pickup might be worth more than the guitar. So you might want to route the guitar. I'm, 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 I'm all for routing, even just taking the drill to it. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm trying to get this stuff. I do the electronics, I don't do the woodworking, so. Oh, uh, really? You already had a juice on me? <laughs> yeah, you already had a juice. Do you have another battery yeah. for it? Okay, yeah. you're a serious contractor. We're gonna lose a little bit of our grounded coating. No way. But it's not gonna matter. I mean, those cavities didn't used to be grounded back in the day, anyway. <laughs> we should probably mask the neck a little bit. I see the corner of the neck getting hit. There you go. And my finger. 
you did a great job at not messing up your guitar while doing that. I have to agree. I can't believe you didn't get any spots. Like any mix? Here, ready? Close your eyes. Make a wish. Oh, so much. So little more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Quite a lot more. Look at this chisel. It's got the guard on and everything. Brilliant idea, chisel on that. Now don't split it over to the screw hole though. Yeah. So we'd hate to have a split go towards the screw. <coughs> No! Oh, it's real! Oh! Dang, look at all this wire length we have. Yeah, that's I don't even know if that's all hard or not. It looks like it's gonna make it to where it's really close though. It's gonna barely make it. Dang! I didn't realize how good. The cream color on that pickup was going to go with that bottle cap knob. And to have this bottle cap knob that's like so vintage, I believe it's 50s. It's pre-solid body. This is from a guitar before solid body guitars were really around significantly. It's definitely older than 59. And to have it click like that, when you push it in and have it do that kill switch thing. Careful not to scratch the back with the wood chips. Oh yeah, those are pokey. Not that your belt buckle is not going to do that, but you know. You used to know me, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> I'm still on the Are you bumping into something trying to bring the pickup down? Yeah, I might need to chisel uh, It's not deep enough, huh? Yeah, I need to chisel a bit more. Uh -oh. Sucks because I need to take this bitch out. So if you have a bunch of scratches above your pickups, I'll know why. <laughs> I can switch it up with this cover. Well, we'd have no, to I drill. Can't. Yeah, you can. You can just drill two holes. Yeah, so is the cover not letting it go down enough? No, the cover's too high. You know what I mean? Is the cover too high for the pickup to go deep enough in there? Is the screws too short? Yeah. Oh. So the Let's screws see, the won't screws. let it. You're at the end of your screw length, huh? I'm at the end of the screw length. Okay, so. Actually, let's see real quick again. Okay. Now that I rechisel. Shit. That pickup is likely older than either of us. That's awesome. But funny enough, it could be the same age. We're getting up there. So right now, this... It's too... Yeah, see, it, it, the frame fits under the strings and fine, but the screws aren't long enough to drop the pickup low enough. So what we're gonna do... Oh, if we just switch the, the screws? Well, I don't know if we've got three screws that are going to be threaded the same as that pickup. But we do have this frame, which we're just gonna have to drill two holes in the top of this frame yeah. to match those two holes. And it's not like there isn't already an extra hole on the top of this one anyway. <laughs> We've already got a hole on the top of that frame, so we're just gonna have another frame that then has a spare hole on the top. So let's drill it. Let's line them up and do that. Good yeah. we think that we, we I think it's gonna just slap in, but there's always gonna be these little things. And we're Frankenstein in it. So let's take that frame completely off, and then we'll put the frames on top of each other, mark the spots, and drill them. And this will go pretty quick. See, one thing though you'll notice these pickups, mm -hmm. two wires. The burst bucker, a lot more than two wires. So what do you do? Well, Gibson. Helps you out already. 
what's going on in here is there's actually two pickups. It's like two single coil pickups, but they're in series, like two AA batteries and a flashlight. And uh, the red is the positive, so to speak, of one, and the black is the negative of the other. And the green and white are the other sides of both of them. So your electrons would flow from the negative through one pickup between the green and the white wires, then through the other pickup, and uh, and yeah, maybe the electrons flow the other way sometimes too. It's AC. It's a it's an oscillating frequency. Anyhow, in a nutshell, look at they already hooked the ground to the black, and here's your red, and you leave the green and the white alone if you just want it to be an ordinary humbucker. If you want to coil tap it, meaning use half of the thing as a single coil pickup, that's what these wires are for. Boom, so just throw it in there, just throw it at it. Feed this through the fucking through, right? Yeah, feed the wire through first, and then we're gonna put the frame on it. Our DiMarzio pickup has a different frame. See how it has two screws on one side and one on the other? Which I think is a better way to do it. So we're going to keep its frame and uh, we're going to use the other frame on the burst bucker. And this is our, our new neck pickup. It has a bridge frame. So frame's going to be a little thicker on it, but looks like we've got enough space. Do this way? Yeah. Now the hardest part is... Wait, does this have a case? Yeah, the frame. <laughs> the hardest part's going to be getting the screw to go in the thing and compress the spring. It looks like one spring, but they're on top of each other. Here's why this is hard. Look how long the spring is. Like, no one's gonna have their pickup like an inch in there, but it has to like compress a lot. Look at the, the old spring it's compared ridiculous. to the new spring. That's ridiculous. There's the old spring, there's the, <laughs> the old Epiphone spring, and there's the Gibson spring you're supposed to cram in there. But let's. I can cram it. Let's ditch that spring and those screws. Because I want to use the the Gibson spring and the Gibson screws. Although I'm starting to kind of doubt it because Gibson gave you flat screws, slotted screws. Just such a pain in the ass. Do you still want to use the slotted screws? Or do you want to go back to? Well, I think they're a different thread. Yeah, you got to. The to screws are a different thread. Yep. Yeah. No, I have to use these. Yeah, I like how the Epiphone springs have a, a cone to them, too. And they're not slotted, but... It's not going to sound like a burst busker unless you have the burst busker spring and the burst busker... Bur, bur, burst busker screw. <laughs> burst busker, dude! You'll be busking with this pickup. It's perfect for... work in the streets. See, this, this is why this part sucks. You have to compress that whole spring and... Managed to get a slotted screwdriver to stay in a slotted screw. Why don't they even make this Phillips to make it easier on us? Because it's vintage, man. Oh, it's okay. Look how, how much extra spring there is. You have to compress like almost an inch of spring before you even line it up with this part. This one always seems like it starts Disney-esque to me. Man, if I scratch my pickup because of this, I see it would be easier with two people. <laughs> How do they think that this, this is a good... This, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's like this is part of making you feel accomplished. For putting a Gibson pickup in your Epiphone. Because that's who buys this. 
no one buys a Gibson pickup and then like puts it in a Fender yeah. or puts it in an Ibanez or puts it in a Grush. These springs on this Epiphone, they like connect on top to where they stay in place. No way. Yeah, they're actually wider on this side than they're on this side. I saw that cone action to it, but I didn't know that they like because kind of popped they, in they, there. They kind of popped into place up here, oh. so when they don't really come out, you have to, you have to like forcefully take them out. That's the awesome. Stuff, yeah. All right, so how the hell are we gonna do this? Hold on. Just Whoa. like that. You just take a bit that fits that exactly. Yeah, I would with your hand stick it through and mark it, and then remove the whole one and draw where the mark is, or get or score with the screwdriver. Got him. Alright, now tighten the bit. Gotta remember what you did right there. Put it that way forever. I'll sing it at you if you ever Alright, it's low and steady on this one because you don't have another frame. You don't push too hard because it'll crack. Yeah, that's I hold it like that. It's probably not even gonna be right now. Oh it is. So hard. Yeah, you have to make sure you don't go to your finger right after two. And it's such a small frame to crack.